Welcome back to your weekly buffet of bizarre political news. We start out with some good old Sadak inconsistency, North Korea and Norway leaving Uganda awkwardly, Kenya's Meru governor impeached not once but twice in just 10 months for reasons that include naming a road after her husband, oh, and Donald Trump compared himself to Nelson Mandela. Yes, yes it did. It's time for us to take it all in with the second take. Taking care of children can be one of the busiest jobs in the world. That's why CreshGuard is here to give you a little help along the way. Start the day with CreshGuard's immune syrup to help build a strong immune system. CreshGuard also offers other tasty supplements, such as omega-3 chews to support brain development. And for healthy little tummies, look for CreshGuard's range of probiotics that come in drops, sprays, and delicious chock bars. Trust in CreshGuard every day for healthy little bodies and developing minds. All right, it's time for us to get into our stories of the week, starting off in Zimbabwe, where the government organized civil servants to march against the sanctions that were imposed by the U.S. and European Union. Now, the Southern African Development Community, SADC, pushed back its virtual extraordinary summit on Wednesday in order to allow the region to commemorate Zimbabwe Anti-Sanctions Day. The summit had been due to talk about, among other things, the 23 August elections in Zimbabwe, which, according to the SADC electorate, observation mission fell below regional and international basic standards. To Gen Z's, that means they were med. Sadak is sending more mixed messages than a teenage group chat. You went to Zimbabwe, you said the elections were not up to par, basically aligning with part of the reason sanctions were placed in the first place. Yet you are commemorating anti-sanctions day. Shouldn't priority be changing the corruption-saturated environment that created the call for sanctions? Anyway, School children were also on the street for the commemorations, which was weird to behold because kids should be in school, not fighting the U.S. Congress and House of Commons from Bait Ridge, Zimbabwe. You know, ZANU-PF always finds a way to do that one extra thing that makes an awkward situation even more cringe, like sending multiple voice notes after a breakup and then showing up to their door with a guitar and a bad song after getting no reply. Well, getting into the next story... <laughs> It's all about friendships. North Korea closed its embassy in Uganda in an effort to reduce its number of embassies in the region. This comes two weeks after Norway shut down its embassy in Uganda. If I'm Uganda, I'm looking at myself in the mirror wondering why people are starting to avoid me. Because North Korea and Norway couldn't have less in common. That's like your friend that likes listening to country music, leaving your house party right after your friend that listens to hip-hop leaves. It might mean that you just have a bad playlist. Now, might I suggest some Bobby Wine for President Museveni to keep all his party guests happy and entertained. He's charismatic, talented, and he spends more time on your mind than the current terrorist insurgencies in your country. Plus, rumor has it, you like Bobby Wine so much that you won't even let him go home alone from the airport. Now, if that doesn't say bestie, personally, I don't know what does. <laughs> All right, so... Heading into our next story, uh, let's see how much you really love your partner. In Kenya, Meru Governor Kawira Mwangaza has been impeached for a second time in 10 months. Now, Governor Mwangaza was impeached first by the county assembly in December last year, barely three months into office. Nothing says that you are not meant for a job than people trying to get rid of you twice in 10 months and just 90 days into working. That means that the discord was instant, like your auntie standing up to sing after having one too many drinks at your wedding. And much like your auntie, the governor was allegedly drunk on power because she is accused of misappropriation and misuse of county resources, nepotism and unethical acts, vilification and demeaning of other leaders, illegal appointments and usurpation of statutory power. Other allegations include contempt of court and hear this, illegal naming of a public road after her husband. Aside from having a moral CV that reads like Grace Mugabe's yearly goal list, I have to say, I'm not mad at naming the street after your husband. I mean, he must have said that he was tired of always receiving socks for his birthday. And being the thoughtful wife she is, she decided to make her man feel special by naming an entire road after him. This is one of those things that people probably are mad at because they wish they did it first, which is a problem I do not have because I am more than happy to show up with a second take. Namspective after the break. The next days are not a measurement of time. 
but the distance from here to the finish line. For the race you are running, for your kids, your career, your health, your future, not away, but towards it. While the voice in your head reminds you, it won't be easy. But by simply swinging your feet towards the floor, you've taken the first step. Grow for it with Stamino Grow. Five in one supplement available at all leading pharmacies. Welcome back to Second Take. It's time for Nam's Spective. This segment is dedicated to finding out how Namibians feel about their country, Africa, and the world. In this episode, Hancho Kapofi shares his opinion on local celebrities sharing their support for political entities, particularly leading up to elections. Two celebrities speaking on social issues or politics. I think it's uh, quite a good move. It's um, good to know that they are into that as well and that they are sharing their ones and twos opinions in terms of Swapo, RDP, Nudo, what it may be. But also, um, I think it's a very dangerous game to play because some celebrities do it either because they are being paid to do it. Um, I mean, Swapo is giving you a specific fee, so you decide to um, post on swap or, or RDP is giving you a specific fee and you decide to do that. Um, I think it's very important when it comes to politics for individuals to educate themselves and rather know about it rather than hear it from influencers or celebrities because when celebrities are in the mix then it's an unfair game. Um, someone will vote because Dinesh is voting for um, a political, a specific political party that individual is voting for it as well. But when individuals vote for a political party, it should be a vote um, that comes from their education, from reading the manifesto of that specific political party, and it shouldn't be um, a popularity contest. And that is what happens when you involve specific influences. All right, that was Hancho Kapofi sharing his name perspective, and we would love to find out more about yours. Do feel free to comment on our social media pages and let us know how you feel about local celebrities sharing their support for political entities, particularly leading up to elections. When we return, it's time for the heartwarming moment of the week. A double trolley dash in our birthday bonanza while saving on these. Get 10 kg champion super maze for 99.99. 3 kg pasta grande elbows or mac for 64.99. 1.5 kg real good mixed chicken for just 64.99. 1 liter first choice UHT milk for 19.99. And 2 kg surf hand washing powder for 49.99. See the details of our incredible double trolley dash competition at fullmanbrock.com. All right, let's get into the heartwarming moment of the week. 13-year-old Namibian Charles Kandingwa is a tech-savvy kid that didn't have a phone of his own, so he would often use his mother's mobile phone for foreign currency trading. So she decided to set a goal for him. She told him that if he could make 1,000 Namibian dollars in 100 days, he could have his own phone. Charles got straight to work by starting Charles Cleaning Services in Vinduk, and he has grown to enjoy his business. Inspired by his uncle's suggestion and his day he chose at home, Charles decided to clean garbage cans, yards, and pavements, offering his services for 30 per rubbish bin and 50 Namibian dollars for sweeping and raking. Within a month of starting his business, he had already earned 450 Namibian dollars. Now he operates on weekends while attending school and encourages young people to take initiative and start something of their own rather than solely depending on their parents' income. You know, in a generation of TikTok loving, tweet posting, fashion regurgitating, and music that sounds like someone slowly waking up is good to see a Gen Z living beyond the algorithm. So let's all support Charles by hiring his services using the number that you can see on the screen. That's our heartwarming moment of the week. After the break, I have a chat with one of Namibia's foremost entertainment journalists, Michael Kayunde, about the intersection of celebrity culture and politics. Stay with Second Take.
joining me now is one of Namibia's foremost entertainment journalists. Actually, in my opinion, he is the foremost entertainment journalist, Mr. Michael Kayunde. As we talk about the intersection between celebrity, culture, and politics, how's it going, Mike? Good man, how are you? Taking it easy, man. Oh, yeah. Taking Thanks it for easy. Having me. It's good to have you here. You know, mm. you spend a lot of time um, around uh, celebrity culture, entertainment, art, creativity, and you know, you understand that naturally, artists, you know, they're inclined to have an opinion. You know, yes. sometimes they talk about it, but for the most part, it's in their work. But we're, we're in that part, in that time, you know, in the world where now in popularity means influence, and influence means you have to say something. Is that your opinion? Do you, do you think that um, artists should have to contribute their opinions to global issues? Um, I don't think they have to, mm. but I think it's important. It's that important, they do, yeah. You know? uh, and it's important that when they do give their opinions, mm. they do so when they are informed. Mm. Uh, that's why I feel like they shouldn't just say something because yeah, yeah. they are popular yeah, and they, are, exactly. you know, uh, they have an audience. Mm. But uh, if they are well informed on the subject matter, yes. It's important that they share it because they uh, have a larger audience mm. and they can actually influence how their communities react to, you know, yes. global issues. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So, so it's about the information. Yeah, like, it's you about know, the dig information. Into what you're dig into about. it. Yeah. Just because there's a hashtag trending doesn't mean you should, you know, you should be a part just of it. Jump maybe on they it, feel that know? pressure, right? Yeah. Because at the same time, everything's come down to like, streaming and clicks. I remember some people were comparing Drake's numbers to Michael Jackson's. Hmm. And we were like, no, guys, we it's, bought physical copies. It's not the same. <laughs> it's not the same not conversation. The same. Yeah. But, but, you know, the conversation, you know, the way the industry works now is it's about clicks. It's about relevance. Yeah. And if, for example, let's stick with Drake. He's he's very big on relevance, right? Yeah. Now, he specifically, um, some Americans were mad that he had nothing to say, say about, about the it. Israel and Palestine conflict. Drake yeah. and DJ Khaled, yeah. um, who are generational uh, Jew and Palestinian uh, respectively. Yeah. But I'm looking at that and I'm like, what's Drake supposed to say? That's that's the thing. But I also feel the people that you know feel like Drake should say something mm. just because of his influence yeah. and uh, what he means. And they and want him to pick their side. Yes. And mm. also because the people that we are talking about, yeah. you know, this is his community. Yes. Drake is Jewish. Yeah. You but know? you know what's so interesting about that? He is Jewish, but he uses the N-word. Yes. So, like, what's this section of Jewish? <laughs> so it's, <laughs> not the lines are very the lines bland. Are very bland. Are very no, bland, but look, but yeah, but that's heritage. At the same time, you know, regardless of how you develop over over time, that yeah, is that is remains who you are. Yeah, don't expect, him to, yeah, day, don't yeah, expect him to do that. Um, DJ Khaled. DJ Khaled, but I think you must also understand, you know, uh, when it comes to you know celebrities, mm. there are those that are like commercially they are the poster child yes and i feel like drake and dj khalid are those yes you know yeah it's, and it's, yeah and they they are where they are you know when it comes to status mm. and stuff because of how they move yes. you know and that it, means it, uh distancing themselves yes, from safe, saying yes. certain things uh -huh. they are like very safe friends yes, yes. you know and we have come to know them as that Based you know they that. are very safe friends yes. they don't um, they don't like to really say things oh, that yeah, are definitely. very uh, Drake, controversial. Drake didn't even want to tell us about his son. And, exactly. And until Pusha T put it on a song. <laughs> so um, yeah. I, I understand their stance of mm. them saying, you know, just keep quiet, keep, keep it, it to quiet. The music. And we also don't know. Maybe they are actually, instead of tweeting, maybe they're, they're actually in the, doing, in, in those, you know, yes. in, in those communities yes, that absolutely. we don't know about. And yeah. I hope that is the case. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know what I mean? You think about artists like uh, Kendrick Lamar, where you're not going to Ask because you know it's gonna be in the he's album. Gonna be, <laughs> it's going to be, you know, it's gonna be in the exactly. album. Exactly. You know, he, yeah. He makes use makes users of um, his music to really say pass um, on the messages. Yeah, pass he, on yeah, the messages. Definitely. And Drake is, you know, not necessarily like that right. all the time. Yeah, yeah. Because you must also understand, uh, Drake touches on different markets. You yes. Know, the club market, like, and yes. with Kendrick, it's more it's very streamlined. Very streamlined. Very streamlined. Yeah. All right. So let's bring it back to Namibia. All <laughs> right. We've got elections coming up next. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we saw it previously. Uh, I believe in President Hage Gengob's uh, first uh, real push. I believe the dog Gaza came out in support of him. They got some money from Swapo. Mm -hmm. I ain't saying nothing about that. <laughs> they do what you need to do. Story for uh, another story day. Story for <laughs> another day. But it was um, it was a good push for Swapo's uh, intentions at that point, right? Yes. Because they managed to get these guys who have the most influence in the country and uh, rallying the youth, which was something that was very synonymous, I think, with uh, Dr. Hage Gengob's mm. uh, 
campaign at that time, it was very energetic, lively, yeah, lively charismatic. Yeah. But then, you know, time goes on and then people have issues with Swapo and now mm. they're looking at you <laughs> and like who <laughs> campaign and then it's like, you know, what's happening? You made us vote you for this You made us vote regime. for this situation. <laughs> of course, I mean, you can't ask an artist to take responsibility for that, but bring it in, into our context, mm -hmm. uh, context. Do you see that happening again? Uh, not necessarily just Swapo. And do you think it's essential? Uh, I think it, it's in essential. Um, and um, in terms of me seeing it happen, mm. I'm not really certain because when I look at the current artists that are really like trending, yes. your Yeezer, Yeezer, they are not very politically... Yeah, yeah. But you know, I'm looking at uh, Miss Gideon's portfolio. She's very diverse. You know what I mean? <laughs> she had a gospel song and then and she had then a very different... Yeah, all so of I that, wouldn't be surprised uh, if she... Yeah, so yeah, yeah, maybe that's uh, one thing to consider because yeah. I'm just looking it, looking at it uh, from a, a point of how do I know the artist yeah, yeah. and uh, the the matters that they are, you know, they pay attention to, yeah. and I haven't necessarily seen the artists that are like trending right now yeah. because right now we do have your biggest artists, you know, your Gaza, yeah, yeah. You know, the Dog, and whatever, but. I feel like they have had their time, yes, you know. Absolutely. And I would judge a political party low key yeah. if they go back to them again. <laughs> to you them know? again, uh, exactly. Because there's a I new feel, crowd. Yeah, yes. there's a new crowd now. Why are you not making use of you exactly. know the, the, the younger generations? Yeah. So that's that's my thing. I'm like, yeah, there's an opportunity for yes. this younger artist to actually um, engage. Get, yeah, engage. But I don't know if if the, the yeah, interest lies. If the interest there. lies there. I yeah. mean, I suspect it would. I, I might make a bold prediction, but it's based yeah. on the fact but that money is money. Also. Money is money, and so, plus, also this election, the majority of voters will be millennials. Exactly. So, we'll so see how that yeah. Goes. So, yeah. Um, I expect now political parties to actually yeah. identify yes. this influences within yes. uh, the music space that yes. are you know the millennials yes. because. Having their backing will mean uh, yes. something to to, you know, to their campaigns. Absolutely. Yeah. By the way, don't don't do it with poets. We will betray <laughs> you. We follow our feelings, and you know we're not the ones for that. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but thank you, Mike, for sharing your opinion. Thank you. And for I having think me. it's so important for people to see that you know there's more to this entertainment thing. It's very far reaching, yeah. and ultimately, it's going to help us. You know, a lot of us make decisions with regards to our country. Yes, and I also just before we go, I yeah. really like to you know just uh, emphasize the importance of artists actually you know uh, availing themselves yes and um being you know, active being active when it comes to these things because this is how you plant yourself yeah. uh, and your influence in your community yes. you know you are having you're contributing to ideas and things that actually affect your community Absolutely. and you expect a support from this community so yes. When it comes to serious things, be there for them yeah, also. Exactly. And when you're there for your community, particularly in the moments that matter the most, you will go from being just a one-hit wonder to Rasi Hama singing Kasinga. That's been Michael Kayunde talking about celebrities and politics. Neopaints has established a 67-year Namibian legacy, creating personalized paint solutions that blend quality and innovation for the Namibian people. We pride ourselves in being a 100% Namibian-owned company, investing in our country and our people by employing and empowering true Namibians. With every brush stroke, Neo Paints commits to our quality guarantee and always delivering a coat of excellence. At Neo Paints, we always stay true to our country. We are as Namibian as you. Now, the Rugby World Cup has come to an end, but heading into the World Cup, South Africans were very serious about how they approached the game as a nation. How serious were they about it? Have a look at this TikTok by Kutle Sonkosi. I need you to listen to me. Guys, I need you to listen to me very carefully because this is the most important thing you hear all week. Whatever you did in the build-up of the Rugby World Cup final in 2019, I need you to do it again this week. If you've changed jobs, since 2019, I need you to go back to your old job. If you were single in 2019, but in a relationship now, I need you to be single for this week. If you were dating someone and now you're single, I need you to go ask for love back. If right now you are lactose intolerant, but you weren't lactose intolerant in 2019, I need you to drink milk, uh, eat custard. Everything you did in 2019 that week, I want you to repeat it, because clearly it worked in 2019. Guys, it's on us now.
They bought it down, they bought to get back to the final. Blue Power Rangers have carried us to make sure we still are still employed. Now it's on us. We are one win away from going back to back World Cups. We are one win away from being the first team to win four World Cup titles. We are one win away from a public holiday on a Monday. Don't now put yourself first. It's not about us anymore. It's about the, we're playing for a bigger goal here. We're playing for a World Cup title. We're playing for, for a public holiday on a Monday again. So, guys, please rinse and repeat. That's the theme for this week. Rinse and repeat. The same thing you did there, 2019, do it again this week. Don't do it for me. Do it for your countrymen. Do it for the Springboks. Do it to be off on a Monday morning. Please, guys. You know, no matter how you feel about them, you've got to love how the Springboks bring South Africa together. After the break, it's time for the Global Take. Welcome back to Second Take. It's time for the Global Take. Former U.S. President Donald Trump compared himself to Nelson Mandela. Yes, the same Madiba who spent 27 years on Robben Island before emerging to lead the nation out of decades of apartheid rule. Trump, the front runner for the 2024 Republican presidential nomination, sought to paint himself as a victim of political persecution, telling a crowd of supporters at a rally, I don't mind being Nelson Mandela because I'm doing it for a reason. Yeah, I'm sure you don't mind being Nelson Mandela, Donny boy, but we as Africa mind you mentioning yourself in the same sentence as a true liberation hero who didn't get a million dollar loan from his father. Just allegedly a couple of gifts from the Oppenheimers post jail time, but we never talk about that. Plus, Nelson Mandela once said, we know too well that our freedom is incomplete without the freedom of the Palestinians. I dare you to say something similar to American conservative right-winger Republicans and watch them let you stay in that prison like Tory Lanez. Stay with the second take. And that's a wrap on your favorite political poiki of a show. We spoke about celebrity involvement in politics. We also delved into Sadek's endless confusion on Zimbabwe, Museveni being besties with Bobby Wine, and the true meaning of love, which is getting impeached for naming a road after your partner, not to mention liberation struggle icon and Robben Island survivor, Donald Madiba Trump, seen here looking excited about the long walk to freedom. Aluta continua to your million dollar mansion in Florida, comrade Amanla. My name is Ashkin Berry, and that is my second take.